Hello, everyone. Worldwide, there are over 40 million amputees. That is, people without a part of their leg, hand, or more. In India, of the millions of amputees, 90 to 95 percent of them don't have access to an effective solution to go about their day-to-day -day lives. The largest cause of amputation is diabetes, then road traffic accidents, and then war. And India is the diabetic capital of the world. It's only going to get worse in the coming decades. And in fact, the most common kind of amputation is that of the leg. For a moment, imagine, without any warning, you lose your leg. Would you be able to walk the same way? Would you be able to go about work the same way? Let alone run, play, or dance. Can you about come to terms with this reality? The harsh reality for most amputees is that they either lose their jobs or they earn significantly less than before, which results in reduced social interaction, leading to further isolation. And many a time, a close family member has to become a caretaker, resulting in, in them having reduced uh, income generation. Now, prosthetics have been around for 2,000 years. From the wooden peg leg to carbon fiber prosthetics with which able-bodied people can run faster than normal. But yet, 90 to 95% of people, amputees in India don't have access to an effective solution. This is not just a health or a societal issue, it's also an economic issue. So I'd like to tell, share with you how I, as an engineer, am developing high-quality, cost-effective prosthetic legs for the masses, not just for India, but also Asia, Africa, and South America, wherein people can not just walk and work longer, but also run, play, and dance. Now, to understand this better, I traveled across India talking to doctors from multiple hospitals, organizations, and even amputees to better understand what are the challenges, what were their experiences like, why are things the way they are, because they are in the field, they know best. And to summarize my understanding into three points, first, there is the need for appropriate technology, two, there is a need for awareness, and three, there is the need for accessibility of such technology at scale. Now let's take the first one, appropriate technology. You see, the human leg is made for movement. It's naturally light in weight, it's flexible. But the prosthetics that we give out for free, they are inherently rigid, inflexible, and heavy. Now, as an engineer, I have some background when it comes to making legs or robots that walk. I was developing these wearable exoskeletal suits that help paralyzed people who are completely wheelchair bound to be able to stand up and walk. They would cost about $100,000, but the point is the human leg is essentially a spring, simply said. Now, it turns out, whether you're an elephant, lion, human, a little mouse, or a spider, mathematically, we all essentially walk the same. The human leg is a spring. Back at home, we have this cane furniture that's bent in all these beautiful shapes, and you can sit on it. You see, if it's bent and you can sit, that's a spring of sorts. And so for me, it was really a curiosity-based question. If cane is a spring, and the human leg is a spring, can I make a leg out of cane? 
it really was a curiosity based question. Should I understand this better, I went talking to artisans. So I went to the artisan down the road and I asked him, you know, can you make cane in about this, this shape? And he was like, sure. I was like, okay, can you make cane about that this big, the size of a human leg? And he was like, sure. I was like, okay, can it, uh, can it take about the weight of a human body about, and more, maybe about 150 kgs to 200? And he was like, sure. I was like, uh, okay, that's interesting. And then he made me a couple of pieces. And then I went searching for a mechanical lab with which I had to test it. So I need to know for sure it could really take the weight. And um, after asking around, I finally ended up at the aerospace department at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, under Professor M.R. Butt. Now, they work with space-grade composites like carbon fiber. It turns out cane, too, is a natural composite. And they had just the machine to uh, test cane. So we put the uh, cane leg into the machine and ran it. And it worked far better than we expected. So now we know that cane is strong enough, but um, I don't know how to make prosthetic legs. Like I've worked with robots, but not, not with wood, or not even made these kinds of prosthetics. So I went searching for organizations that made such, and I eventually ended up at the Association of People with Disability in Bangalore. They've been making prosthetics for over 50 years, way longer than I have. And then so together, we made early prototypes of this prosthetic leg. And now, and, uh, one of the users or amputees from the Association of People with Disability came into, uh, volunteered to use the prosthetic leg. And, um, and um, he's a child who lost both his legs. He's more like a grown man. Uh, he lost both his legs above his knee with very short stumps. And that doesn't really allow him to walk much. Now, for the past nine years, he needed two crutches to walk with his prosthetic legs. So after making these cane prosthetics and fitting it, he would come one hour a day for training. And by the third hour, third day, or more like the third hour of wearing the prosthetic leg, this is the first time the child is able to walk without crutches for the very first time. You'll see he's wobbling a lot. That's because using crutches, his core muscles became weak. But then, by the fifth hour, or he was able to do things like kicking the football. And, and uh, even the other users were like, this is awesome. It is lightweight, it's flexible, it's hugely cost effective, but it looks weird. Because they just want a leg that looks normal. And they're like, can you make it look like a real leg so then I can go, I can take it to home, I can take it to office, and then people won't talk about it. And I can just go about living my normal life. And it's like, oh, that's interesting, you know? This is, at the end of the day, only a tool by which they can live a better life, nothing more. So then together, we worked with, uh, uh, we developed these cosmetic covers that make it look more like a leg. Inside of it is skin. We also have digitally printed skin texture that can be color matched to the person's skin tone, making it very realistic looking. And um, in fact, um, then we have uh, one of our early users. He started taking this to work. And when, with the previous leg, he could wear it for three hours and then get tired, with this, since it looks more like a leg and it's light and weight and flexible, he's able to wear this for 13 hours, being able to work longer and earn a better income. So it's fair to say that it's reasonably appropriate. It's lightweight, flexible. Now, it's important to get the word out and create awareness. Because you see, nobody chooses to be an amputee. It happens almost instantly. And many a time, the patient or even the near family are mentally not prepared to handle this. They're not even aware of what amputation is. So to create awareness, we created something called the programs. 
the sports program, the dance program, the fitness program, wherein we encourage our users to take up these activities and uh, we connect them with world-class coaches and provide all the necessary support needed. And our early users have uh, done things like marathons. Um, this is a person uh, who lost his leg about uh, five years ago and he designed his own art leg and he took up bodybuilding. And now he's a fitness trainer to able-bodied people. We also, we also have community gatherings where we have amputees come all across and have fun with each other and learn together about uh, what they can do, cannot do. It's amazing, the, the energy and fun they have. We also have the honor to take part in Cybathlon, which is um, an international competition for prosthetic legs being one segment. And we were the only team from India that got selected. And we were competing with... We were competing with uh, Autobock, which is a German company uh, that, that's the largest manufacturer of prosthetic legs. And then also, they create, uh, they make the fastest legs and the, one of the lightest. They came in with a system worth $100,000. And ours is significantly cheaper than that. Significantly. And, out of the three, and there were three races, obstacle races. Of the three races, in two races, our boys timed first and the second race we timed second. And all of this together has resulted in extremely positive stories of our users and it's got the word around. And now we have thousands of people from across India reaching out to us. And not just from India, from Sierra Leone to Tunisia to West Indies to Mexico to Argentina, people have been reaching out for the prosthesis. Now, which leads to the third facet of now making it accessible to the masses. You see, in India, there are far too few prosthetics, especially to cater to the need of a large country like India. And in fact, not just are there lack of prosthetics, even the process involved is very cumbersome. With plaster of Paris, molding, it's time, uh, you have to wait, depending on the weather, it'll set, and if you don't get it right the first time, then you have to start all over again. It's cumbersome, fragile, time consuming, and it just isn't scalable. So now we are using appropriate technology like compact 3D scanners that can be deployed uh, in a remote village. A person can scan it, upload it to the cloud, and we use a set of open source software where we can digitally modify it. And instead of using, uh, importing complex machines, We've modified the process so you can use readily available machines and material to make, a, a, to, to make the socket. A, mid, a method that would otherwise take eight hours with plaster of Paris or really about two to three days uh, with all the delays, we can do it in less than an hour. And now with this, uh, we are working with world-class partners like the D-Lab from MIT, the International Red Cross in Geneva, and uh, amazing uh, local partners, be it Centra, uh, CMC Velour, St. John's Hospital, the Association of People with Disability, Mobility India, far uh, so many um, partners to help us fine tune this process. Now you see, we are working with extremely smart people from different facets, like from, engineer, uh, from manufacturing to textile to furniture, to bring in their best practices into the medical industry in making better prosthetics just so that we can improve people's lives. Think of it like the people around you having a small piece to the puzzle that you're trying to solve. And you see there are many, many real challenges around us that require a multifaceted, nuanced approach to really effectively solve it. And you don't have to be an engineer or a doctor or a specialist in a field to solve it. If, there is, if you can identify a challenge around you that genuinely matters to you, it's okay if you immediately don't have all the answers. If you can ask the right questions to the people around you, then together you can form an effective solution to the challenge and genuinely make the world a better place. Thank you.